all right um good evening once again ladies and gentlemen and uh, like i stated i hope you guys have gone through part one of uh, finding the domain of a rational function so in today's class i'll do my part two of finding the domain of a rational function so normally like we all know when you talk of part two i normally focus on exam questions so these are exam questions and these are questions from the quiz test and also the final exams so please make sure that you follow up and make sure that you are able to ask questions so i'll start with the first question so the first question is saying for the values of the function h is defined by h of x is equal to 2x over 5 minus x and the question is find the domain of h of x so please feel free to ask questions and feel free to participate so before i solve this question can just one of you confirm if you guys are able to get me or not just unmute yourself and confirm all right thank you so um like i stated from the from part one normally when you talk about the domain of the rational function so when you talk of a rational function it's just a function which is more like in form of a in form of a fraction something that is in that form so a rational function the domain of a rational function depends on the what on the denominator so the denominator is the one which determines the domain of a rational function how does it determine the domain of a rational function we try hard to avoid having a zero under that particular function because if you have a zero then that simply means that that function becomes undefined so if you get your calculator and place one divide by zero it will give you undefined if you get two divided by zero it will still give you undefined so when you talk of rational functions what we are trying to avoid is to have a zero down there we do not want a zero so in this case we have h of x to be equal to 2x over 5 minus x so what you need to understand that for us to have the domain we need to avoid a zero on the denominator so we are going to say domain is equal to x such that you are going to get the denominator please please you are going to get the what the denominator so you get the denominator you say 5 minus x should not be equal to zero such that x is a member of real numbers we are saying x is a member of real numbers because we are trying out the values in the universe in short we are trying out all the numbers in the universe from negative infinity to positive infinity so with that in mind with that in mind we're simply going to say domain domain is equal to you are still going to say x such that 5 will go to the other side and when it goes to the other side it will be negative so it will be negative x should not be equal to negative 5 such that x is a member of real numbers so when you reach this stage what you need to understand is we are just going to work out the value of x the same way we do when we are solving equations so once you do that the next thing that you need to do is you're going to divide throughout by a negative one you're going to divide throughout by a negative one why are we dividing throughout by a negative one we want to get rid of a negative on that x so that means that that a that negative and that negative will go so 
Once that is done, we are going to have the domain as follows. So the domain, the domain will be equal to x such that we are going to say x should not be equal to what 5 such that x is a member of real numbers. So this is our final answer. So this is the domain and this is how you simply express it. So what this statement simply mean is that all the numbers in the universe are the domain of this particular function except 5. All the numbers in the universe are domain of this particular function except 5. Why is it that 5 is not part of the domain? Because if you say h of 5 and then you plug it in, it's going to be 2 multiplied by 5 over 5 minus 5 and this will simply give you 10 divided by 0 so if you place 10 divided by 0 on your calculator what you are going to understand that this will be undefined so this will be undefined so this is the reason why when you are trying to find the domain of a rational function we try by all means to avoid a zero so we try by all means to do what to avoid a zero so that's how easily this can be worked on do we have any questions ladies and gentlemen any questions before i move on florence do you have a question florence do you have a question like Florence she's not around Chivali do you have a question yes I have a question kindly explain the where you're saying as um H they want to the what yes I have a question kindly explain where there you've shaded in yellow yes I'm around okay on the guy which is shaded in yellow what I'm just trying to explain is that the reason why we are saying x should not be equal to 0, the reason why we are saying x should not be equal to 5 is that when you put 5 on x, it's going to be 5 minus 0, 5. So 5 minus 5 is simply what is 0, making this expression to be undefined. So I was just explaining why 5 has been exc excluded from the domain. So that's what I was just trying to, to explain there. Is that okay, Florence? Okay, I've seen a hand from Chivale. What's your question, Chivale? I didn't get you, so the network was tripping. Can you re repeat? I'm saying the only thing that I'm trying to explain in the highlighted part, I'm saying the reason why five... I'm sorry, you can just help me by just starting from the first step. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll share the the same class. I'll share it on our on our platform, and you'll be able to get what I responded or explained in in my solvings. So yeah, since I can notice that most of you cannot really really get me because of network, so what I'll do is I'll I'll send the same class to 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 our platform okay so let's go to number two number two is similar to number one number two is similar to number one so whatever i explained on number one is the same thing that I've, i'm going to explain on number two so that means that you guys will be able to get that so we have been given f of x is equal to x over x minus one 
so like i've said the domain depends on the denominator the domain depends on the denominator so you're going to say domain is simply equal to open bracket x such that you're going to get the, the denominator you're going to say x minus 1 should not be equal to 0 such that x is a member of real numbers and then after that you are going to say a domain is equal to you are going to write x such that one will go to the other side so it will be x should not be equal to one such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how you can find the domain so in some in some questions you might be asked to express this to express this this solution in set builder notation so what you're going to say you're going to say open bracket negative infinity comma one and then open bracket union you're going to say open bracket one comma one comma what one comma infinity so this is what we are simply having for the domain in case of um in case of in case of number line representation in case of number line representation that is the knowledge from sets so you're going to have negative infinity there and you're also going to have positive infinity that side and then the zero will be there to demarcate the positive from the negative so in terms of the representation on a number line this is how it will look you put a one there so you're going to put a one there then it will be open okay then it will be open like that you put a one then it will be open like that you go this way okay and then you are also going to go the other way but one should not be shaded so for for more information about the number line representation please watch the class on sets so basically this side it is one comma infinity and the other side it's negative infinity comma one so this knowledge some questions they'll ask you to represent on a number line like on the set interval notation or you can represent it using a number line so mostly uh, sets they govern almost everything in mathematics mostly sets they govern everything in mathematics almost everything in mathematics so you need to be able to understand such so this is the solution you can use the interval notation this is interval notation okay from sets so this is interval notation and then this one is the number line this one is the number line so these are the two things that i've just added from what we already know do we have any questions ladies and gentlemen do we have any questions please feel free to ask Okay, I can see a hand. Yes, Florence, what's your question? So there, when um, taking it in a number line, is it a math that is supposed to be uh, negative infinity comma one, close then union uh, positive one comma infinity? Yes. Or maybe it's supposed to be, sometimes it gets to be intersection or it's only union. The reason why we have put union is because we are having two sets which are making up one thing. We are having two sets which are making up one thing. So for this representation, mostly it's the union. Mostly it's the union. Yeah. For this representation. But I would advise you to, to understand the question what it is and also... To visit the concepts on sets. Is that okay for yes. us? 
yeah mm -hmm. okay so the next thing is number three so let f of x be equal to that i'll write solution let f of x be equal to that and g of x be equal to that find the domain of f of x so i'll start with or with f of x which i'll put as a1 so in this case i'll say f of x is simply equal to 2x over 3x minus 2 so like i did to question 1 and 2 i'll do the same thing with this one so what i'll say is domain i'll write as domain is equal to i'll get the denominator so i'll say x such that 3x minus 2 should not be equal to 0 such that x is a member of real numbers then i'll continue and say domain is equal to x such that 3x should not be equal to 2 we'll go to the other side it will be 2 such that x is a member of real numbers when i reach at that stage i'll divide throughout by 3 so that i only have x so i'll divide throughout by 3 divide throughout by 3 so that 3 and that 3 will go so my domain my domain will simply be equal to x such that you're going to say x should not be equal to 2 over 3 such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how i can easily work out the domain of f of x do i have someone with a question i think this has already been solved before just like uh, one and two so let me just go to the next one so the next one is g of x is equal to one over x squared so one thing that we we want to avoid is having a zero down there isn't it so for this question it's very easy for you to to work it out we're just going to say domain is equal to x such that you know that if you put negative one there it will work out if you put one it will work out but if you put a zero it won't work out because zero squared it is zero so you already have a zero so you're just going to say um you're just going to say x should not be equal to zero i'm just going to say x should not be equal to zero so that's how easily you can work it out x should not be equal to zero such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how easy that question is but for those who may want to move the way we are moving you can simply say domain you can simply say domain is equal to x such that you say x squared should not be equal to zero such that x is equal to what x is is a real number then there you can say um x should not uh, x such that you introduce a square root x squared should not be equal to you introduce also a square root that side but we are not going to put positive or negative because we know that zero has no positive or negative so such that x is a member of real numbers so with that we are just going to have x such that you are going to have that uh, square root and square root cancel x should not be equal to uh, 0 such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how easily you can work it out so whether you move the the blue way or you move the red way you are going to arrive at the same answer just that the the blue way needs a little bit of thinking and a little bit of experience and you'll be able to get it right 
So that's how easily you can work out. Do I have someone who has a question on that? Any question before I move on? Yes, Chimuka. What's your question, Chimuka? So my question is there yeah, well, was x squared. He said we should do this we should introduce uh, a square to get rid of the square. Yes. Now what if it was x squared minus fifteen? X squared minus and what? Is a four the square root of fifteen is four. Are we supposed to put positive or negative or take it just like that? You have to put positive or negative. I'm sure Try to, to watch part one of this class. I think I have explained that part. But since it's a number, if it's uh, 15, it's a number. 16 is a number. You will have to put positive or negative. But zero, you don't have positive zero or negative zero. It's a neutral number. Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Yes, do we have another question apart from that one? I saw Florence with the hand. Yes, Florence, what's your question? Frederick? Yes, sir. Um, I have a question there, not not this one, but the previous one, the one that you're from solving, which is saying um, X, no, the, the same page, now the first one. Yes. Yes. Why well, saying X such that X is not equal to two over three hidden. So now so if we were to divide that say two divided by three and it gives us a decimal point answer, would it be wrong or correct? You won't have a calculator. So why should you oh. waste time to say two divided by three, which will give you somewhere zero point six 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 six. So you don't have a calculator. So you, you, you play with fractions. Is that okay? All right, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Frederick, I saw your, your hand up. Yes, sir. My question is on the square of that here. How that was put on your How did it get answer now that we never have a uh, I can't get you. You are a little bit far from your mic. Okay, my question is on that part where you put in the crowd. How did the crowd get cancelled now that you never had the part? Oh, square root of zero is zero. Frederick, square root of zero is zero. Press on your calculator. It's going to give you zero. Square root of zero is zero. Okay, so the square root of zero is zero. Those are some arithmetics that you need to, to know. Okay, let's move on and look at the next one. Okay, so the next one is similar to the third example, but for g of x. So I'm going to say solution. So after that, I'm going to get the denominator. I'll get the denominator. So I'll say I'll say f of x is equal to x minus one over x, and then what I'll say is I'll write domain, I'll write domain, and then when I write domain, I'll say x such that I'll get the the guy who is down. So x should not be equal to what zero, such that x is a member of real numbers. So that's the, the answer for the domain. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? No question? Okay, we can move. The next question is the function f and g are defined by f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 2 
and g of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1 find the domain of that um, the person with the mic which is on kindly unmute yourself okay so what you're going to say you start with the first one which is f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 2 i'm pretty sure by this time we all know what to do so you're going to say domain you say x such that x minus 2 should not be equal to 0 such that x is a member of real numbers then you say uh, x such that you are going to say x should not be equal to 2 and then you say such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how easily you can work out that one so for b you say um, domain you say domain is equal to you are going to get x such that you are going to get x plus 1 should not be equal to zero such that x is a member of real numbers then after that you're going to say x such that uh, plus one will go to the other side so you're going to have x should not be equal to negative one such that x is a member of real numbers so this is how easily you can work out that one also do we have any questions ladies and gentlemen before we call it a day any question any question so um please for those in case you are failing to ask a question right